Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Monday, April the 6th, and right now it is 4.58 p.m. And I got the AC fixed, so it sounds perfect. Okay. And my little dog is doing well. I had a little bit of that CBD oil left. I got a few more drops, and I ordered him some CBD treats today. $30, but I'm not taking him back to the vet. There's no need. Anyway, and I'm just going to call and see if I can get pain medicine from them for if he wakes up with that heavy breathing in the middle of the night. Now that I know what it is, I, I don't know. Y'all give me your opinion. This is not about my dog, but I just... If he was your dog, would you take him back just to see how far advanced it is, if there's any more, to see if his heart is enlarged, and see that, then that would be putting him on a medicine for heart failure, but he said the heart sounded good, so I'm thinking... I don't want to know any more bad news, but I want him to have pain medicine. Right now he looks very comfortable. Let me get on with the lesson for today that I've been led to do because here's how it happened. I was doing my email, okay, and I was reading Don's email and I was reading the all the um you know, there's several of them. Many are very short. And the one was just a line or two, but then it had a scripture below it. And it was in, like, a message Bible. And I was like, I recognize that scripture, but that doesn't sound exactly right. But anyway, I looked it up in Blue Letter Bible, and I decided to read the whole chapter. <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> and, um... I feel led to get do a message on it because it, it can be very uplifting to anybody uh, that needs it. It may not, you may not need it, but you over there might need it. And you, you sitting way back there, you might need it. Okay, so I'm going to teach it. How about that? Okay, and dear Heavenly Father, I pray once again that you would let your Holy Spirit... Help me teach this chapter, adding to it only what you want me to. Please, Lord, help me in Jesus' precious and holy name, I pray. And God bless everybody who listens to this message. Amen. Okay, let's get started. All right, hopefully I won't change positions and my head won't end up at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> okay. Paul's Apostolic Ministry. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you would like to pause this and open up the blue letter Bible.org. Open the new tab and open that up. And go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 starting with verse 1. Okay. This section is titled, Paul's Apostolic Ministry. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we, did, we all have received mercy. Anybody who's born again, and living right, and you know you're going to heaven, do you not realize that what mercy that is? We can never take mercy for granted. Grace or mercy, they kind of go hand in hand. Moving on, verse 2. But we have renounced the things hidden. Oh, I know what I meant to say. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was thinking when I was reading this, 
that says, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we received mercy. Okay. Talking about this ministry. Okay. Many of you might think, Well, gosh, oh, I don't have a ministry. But do you not? Do you pass out tracts when you can? When you can afford to buy some, do you pass them out? Are you diligent to pass them out? That can be a ministry. That plants seeds. Many people will say, well, obviously I have a ministry. If you have a YouTube channel and you're uh, putting out the word, you're putting out your dreams and messages or teachings, that's a ministry. So if you want a ministry and you don't have a ministry, then ask the Lord to give you one. Because we always want to be in Father's will. Okay? So, whether it's sharing the gospel one-on-one, -on -one, which is hard to do right now because we're supposed to be quarantined in our homes, basically. So, what else can you do? Can you do anything online? Can you send a mass email? Uh, scripture of the day something that won't get you blocked by your whole family this I don't know I tried that I tried sharing videos to my whole family too many I, I was just overzealous and I would send three or four or five videos in one email well, of course that's overwhelming as if they didn't have anything else to do except watch YouTube videos I should have known better, but I was just young and it, doing all this, first learning about YouTube, and my eyes were just opened. I mean, they were like, boing, opened. Well, I think the Lord had been cracking them for a few years, but then I got on YouTube and wham, you know. Anyway, so let me move on. Don't do that. All right. Verse 2. But we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, which you know what that means, right? Not changing it in any way. Usually you hear it as the Bible is the unadulterated word of God, not changed. So they're not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God which I got to tell y'all I don't remember that being a word in there because I studied the New Testament quite a lot when I was first born again I stuck mostly in the New Testament and got more into the Old Testament after I moved to Birmingham not that I didn't read any of it I read a lot of it but I wasn't really studying it like I should have anyway I just don't remember adulterating being in this verse but I could be wrong okay so not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God but by the manifestation of truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God Commending ourselves to every man's conscience. Trying to live. That's a tough one. Because to me, it says, But we have renounced the things hidden because of shame. They renounced them. They said, Lord, I'm no longer going to, they repented, in other words. No longer going to do the things they did in hidden. Like when you're all alone in your bedroom, whatever it is, it caused you shame. He said, they're no longer doing that. They renounced those things. They're not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God. 
not trying to change the Word of God. How many people are... Oh my goodness, this verse really says a lot. How many people have been taught in their different denominations, once saved, always saved. You have to observe Sabbath on the on Saturday, and others have, oh no, you got to observe the Sabbath on a Sunday. Well, both are incorrect. You can you can keep every day alike and keep them all holy. You can you uh, people are taught you sprinkle babies on the head. No, you have to be completely immersed in water. Well, Jesus was completely immersed in water, so I say if you're going to baptize, do it that way. That's just the way. Since Philip did it after Jesus rose from the dead, before he was transfigured to another place, that was the first example of somebody being just, whoop, he disappeared and he was placed into another place in the same physical form. It was like Star Trek, you know, being me up Scotty type of thing. You know, I wonder how much thought people have given to that. Okay, sorry, I don't mean to belabor this, but the Lord is just bringing some stuff out in my head. Okay, so you know what craftiness is. It's being used as, um, I'm crafty, okay, but if used in another way, it means you, you're real good at, finagling your way out of something you're good at finagling your way into uh, say a wedding that you don't you're not invited to there's people that do that you know and bar mitzvahs and they don't even know that you don't belong there they just assume one side or the other invited you or you're the guest of someone they invited you know because they'll put plus one they, they figure you're somebody's plus one. And most of those people will have a crafty story ready to tell when they're asked, Oh, who are you with? Oh, that fellow over there. We And, he, and then they'll go on, blah, 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 until that person says, Well, I've got to go speak with somebody else. Okay, let me move on. That's craftiness, okay? It, it's lying. Okay, and you don't change the Word of God. Stop twisting the Scriptures. We live by the Word. We have to rightfully divide the Word. Okay, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience. In the sight of God. Now that's that. Um, that's the one that throws me, because I know where it says we are free to eat meat, no matter where it came from, because we know that an idol is nothing. So what if it was sacrificed to an idol? We know that an idol is nothing. But if we're sitting with a brother or sister in Christ. Back then, I'm using an example for back then. And they ate it, and this person's new in the faith, and they're like, hey man, that, that meat was sacrificed to an idol. And you can see they're bothered by it. Then you say, okay, I won't, you're right, I won't eat it. Or however you would word that. I mean, you could get into the scriptures and say, well, listen, the Bible says blah, 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 blah. Back then they didn't have the Bible. Okay, I think that's what it means. You live to not offend their conscience. That's how I'm taking it. Leave your comments what you think about verse 2. And even if our gospel is veiled or hidden, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Those who are perishing just don't get it. Verse 4. 
in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. The God of this world, small g, that's Satan. He is the God of this world. He has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as your bond servants for Jesus sake for we do not preach ourselves I guess it's saying that Jesus is preaching through us but Christ Jesus as Lord yeah and ourselves as your bond servants for Jesus sake right if we're doing this right we should be doing this for him not for glory not for honor not for accolades not for donations not for anything but Jesus sake to win souls to him and to help teach people how to live right so they stay on the straight and narrow. That is my job as a servant of the Lord for my ministry. That is my goal. Okay, let me move on. Verse 6. For God who said, Light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light a capital L of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ so we know that no matter how dark it looks or may be looking to you the light shall shine out of darkness we will prevail God is protecting his children and we have nothing to fear in this time of this so-called pandemic all right let me move on but we have this treasure in earthen vessels our bodies are earthen vessels and we have this treasure, this light. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Did y'all ever sing that in Sunday school? Well, I sang it, got the kids to sing it when I was third grade teacher <laughs> anyway I've sang at several places um, camp meetings you know things like that um, so we have this treasure this light or God the Holy Spirit in our earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves you see when we teach it should be words that God would say and not our our own understanding now sometimes I do say in my honest opinion I think this means whatever because I don't know and I'm not feeling it from the Lord so I don't know for sure always verse 8 now this is the verse I was led to that I thought didn't sound quite right but I recognized it we are afflicted afflicted in every way but not crushed perplexed but not despairing 
persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. How many can say amen to that, to those two scriptures? That's verses 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. If you want to write them down and remind yourself, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, were struck down, but not destroyed. Let that encourage you when you feel struck down. You just tell Satan, get thee behind me, Satan. I command you to leave right now in Jesus' name. And thank God you're not destroyed. Do not let him destroy you, brothers and sisters in Christ. You keep remembering that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Okay? Always carrying, carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus. This is worded a little weirdly. This is verse 10. Always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Now that tells me we always remember that Jesus died on the cross, shed that beautiful precious blood for our sins, for the remission of our sins, and gave us grace and mercy so we could be saved if we believe in him to the point of obeying his commandments okay his word and how do you do that if you don't read the word if you don't read what he said to do you won't know what he said to do so stay in your word stay in the words of red as somebody said she really loved i think it was she forgive me if i'm wrong there could have been a could have been a guy, but I'm pretty sure it was a gal, said she loved Matthew 5, chapter 5, 6, and 7. If you read those, it's all words in red. If you have a Bible that has Jesus' words in red, those three chapters are all red. I'm pretty sure every word. Or well, there might be a the or and or preposition or whatever. There might be something that's black. But anyway, those are the words... That's what I'm talking about. If you're kind of new in the Lord or you just need a good refresher course, go back to the Gospels and read the words of Christ. What did he teach? What were his parables? Study those. And, and then try to keep in mind how many of them sound like he's talking about the end days. You'd be surprised every time you read them you'll learn something new. All right, let me move on to verse 11. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. I believe that means you're constantly being delivered over to death. You're constantly putting to death the flesh. You're delivering yourself you're constantly, which means you're being, because you're born again, you become aware of sin. And when you start to do something sinful, lusting, uh, complaining, gossiping, you catch yourself and you give that thing over to the Lord. You kill it. You kill the flesh. You kill the desire to gossip, to lie, to uh, what I said already. I can't already remember it. So anyway, that's, I believe that's what that means. You're constantly being delivered over to death. 
So if that if that says you're constantly being delivered over to death, then you surely cannot continue to think, okay, Jesus paid it all on the cross. He covered all my sins in his blood, past, present, and future. I'm good to go. But you still do good things. You try to love people best you can. But are you repenting? Are you giving those fleshly things over to God? Moving on. So death... Wait a minute. Let's see where coming. Yeah. So death works in us, but life in you. Death works in us, but life in you. Okay, Paul is saying death works in us, but life in you. I'm not sure what he means by that. I'm not getting anything. Why would Paul say death works in us, but life in in you, why wouldn't life be working in him too? See, I don't understand that. Moving on. But having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, quote, this is all caps, which means it was said before, I believed, therefore I spoke, unquote. We also believe. Therefore, we also speak. Okay. If you believe in the gospel, the gospel truth, Jesus died, rose again on the third day, shed all his blood for the remission of our sins so we could go to heaven if we believe and obey, then you should also speak it. Even though it costs you your friends, your family don't want to hear it, they quit coming around, they don't invite you over anymore, so what? You, you just say, okay, Lord, that was one for you, or that was two for you, that was, I gave up two, two more for you today, Lord, they don't want to talk to me anymore, well, you see, that's how it ends up being. That's why you're persecuted, but not crushed. Okay, the part I read earlier. Let me remind you, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despairing. You're persecuted, but not forsaken. You're struck down, but you're not destroyed. Okay. But having, let's see. Knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will present us with you for all things are for your sakes so that the grace of which is spreading to more and more people may cause the giving of thanks to abound in the glory of God. Hallelujah. That's what we want. More and more people. Okay? Therefore, do not lose heart. But though our outer man is decaying, like we're getting old, we're hurting, we got our aches and pains, whatever. Our outer man is decaying. Yet, our inner man is being renewed day by day. As long as you continue on the path of righteousness, that's what's happening. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. That's what I was waiting to get to. Think about it. If what we're going through 
And I'm not even talking about this COVID thing. I think staying in our houses for a while is a great idea. And not for the reasons they say. Wouldn't it be great if everybody could have a two-week vacation all at the same time and it was mandatory? You go have fun with your families. Have dinner at the table again. And so on. Things people quit doing because they got into... Ah, uh, they're probably all sitting around on their computers in their little... That's all those people at night do when they're supposed to be watching the door and, and signing people in. Of course, at night it is slow. I, I admit it, it's slow. But you see them on these phones or these little... This one guy has this game thing with little things on the side and he's just so busy doing... <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, probably most of the people are sitting at home doing that. But, you know, maybe not everybody. Maybe the children of God are returning to the Lord, reading their Bibles together. Wouldn't that be awesome? We can pray that can happen. Okay, so all the affliction you feel now, whether it's poverty, sickness, both, homelessness, uh, bills, you're worried about bills now, all this affliction, think about it. How hard-pressed it feels on you. He's saying... This light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. So what we're going through now is like way up here compared to what we're going to get. Can you see my hands? If you had scales, what you're going through now is like way up here in the scales. And what you're going to get is like as far down as the scales will go. Like plunk. Like they went boom. Like that. Don't forget. What God has in store for you is more than worth it. Okay? Last verse. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So let's take a moment to imagine what heaven will be like. Now I've watched a lot of NDE videos, and I believe that people really do die and go to heaven or sometimes they go in the spirit. Now, whether they've actually died or not, I don't think they're sure. But anyway, they either go to heaven or they go to hell. And the ones that are about hell, I don't know. God may choose to show them what they see. But I want to concentrate on what, you, what the people have said about heaven. I know a lady personally that lived here. She and I had a little prayer meeting together for a little while. We didn't really do a lot of praying. She really wanted to gossip about her daughter. but And I would try to, you know, like make excuses for the daughter and, and encourage her that maybe she's doing the best she can and, and whatever. Well, she died of her heart problem for a couple of minutes and she went to heaven but she didn't go all the way to the gates but she said what she saw she didn't see Jesus but she saw that the most beautiful green grass you would ever want to see and flowers along the path she was on. And they were swaying and they were playing music. She said they were singing. It was like they were singing, but it, but it was more like playing music. And she said, I can't even really describe it. But they were swaying to the beat of the music. And she said that was so awesome to me. And before I could get a walk on up the path to the gate 
I they brought me back and I didn't get to see heaven. And I said, oh, you're so blessed. I said, I've seen the bright light when I almost died, but I didn't quite make it. And, I, and you know, and that's all I can tell you is how bright the light was. And I felt such peace. And it was so wonderful. And if just seeing the bright white light can do that, just imagine, imagine crossing over and it be like that when it happens and and we see so much more than that grass and flowers and beauty she said there was just beautiful flowers everywhere and it was just so astounding she couldn't describe it and then other people have talked about actually being in heaven and being in the presence of the lord and i know that little boy who died and went to heaven his daddy wrote the book, Heaven, Heaven is for Real. He saw Jesus. And he didn't say anything right away. Because he was only three years old. He probably thought he was dreaming or something. But I guess he figured it out. And he said, Dad, when I was, when I was, having surgery you were in the next room praying and crying out to god i saw you and he what if you ever can get that book you won't put it down i tell you what it was so good talking about first how he was so sick and they thought it was the flu because his sister had the flu assuming you see that's why we should not ever assume that somebody else has the same thing as somebody else. Just because their symptoms are similar. Anyway, he saw Jesus. He saw God the Father. He said the Father had wings. And some people said, I don't believe the kid. God the Father doesn't have wings. Well, then why does he protect us under the shadow of his wings? Why does he cover me with his feathers and under his wings? Will I trust? They need to read Psalm 91. Don't you think so? And never mind our mansions. I can't even begin to imagine. But the Lord knows all about what we want. He knows our style that what style house we like, you know, I mean, and that you think, well, you're just talking worldly. Well, you know what? The Lord Jesus loves you so much. He wants to give you everything you always wanted because you chose him. Yeah, I love him so much. That if he gave me a little wooden cottage in the woods or even on the edge of the big mansions, I would be thrilled to be there because I'd still have the rights to go to the worship hall. And I think, how big is this worship hall? What does it look like? Is it all gold? How many can it hold? Because I don't think we can all fit in there at the same time. But what if it miraculously grows to the size of whoever shows up and what if it's made in such a way that it never feels like you're in the back row i think of things like that well anyway i'll let you do your own day dreaming think on that there's a verse it says something like this whatever is lovely whatever is pure Whatever is holy, whatever is good, think on these things. So when you get down and out and depressed, because you really want to get out of here and go do something. Oh my God, I'm going crazy. Sorry, Lord. I don't say that usually, but I think people are probably thinking stuff like that. No. Take it like it's a vacation. And think. Figure out if you need to fix something that's been needing fixed, fix it. If you've been wanting to make that dress, get that material and pattern out and make it. Sing, put your praise and worship music on and do some of the things you've been meaning to get done. Get the kids involved if you have children. Get your husband involved if you've got one of those. 
I just think it should be family time with God involved. And, and that's just my opinion. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And over myself and my computer and my internet. Lord, help me to turn it off when I'm not using it. I am so thinking my dog got cancer because I got Wi-Fi. But, you know, it's all right because I had to have it for my ministry. And I may not be all that popular. And I may not get a thousand views. But I, I don't do this for numbers. I do this for the Lord. And whoever does benefit from it, well, that's a few more. That's a few more that are going to make it into heaven the first go around instead of being left behind. But those left behind have the hope. They still have their blessed hope that there's a second one right behind it. You pay attention to the seals. When you see Barack Obama coming on the scene, you know that's the rider on the white horse. There will be some kind of war. Or men will be allowed to kill. Or, you know, whether it's a civil war, whether it's bombs, the Lord will protect you through it. You have to believe it. Then there's the economic collapse. Okay? So, that's why people are telling others to stock up. It doesn't necessarily mean you don't believe in the rapture. Because some people will go in the second one a lot. It says a multitude too large to number. That's at the sixth seal. Alright. The fifth seal is people under, well there's the fourth seal is the rider on the pale horse which means death. A lot of people dying. And I personally believe that's when the COVID-19 comes out again. Only it's not a virus. We know what it is. I've been sharing. You know Dana Ashley. Well, check out her latest video. Dana Ashley. A-S-H-L-I-E. All right. Dana. D-A-N-A. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. We know what happened in Wuhan. I do want to add that. And it has to do with F-I-V-G-E. All right. So, where was I? Fifth seal. The martyrs under... The altar. Now this is why I believe the first resurrection has not happened yet. Because Jesus said, wait a little longer until your brothers and sisters will be martyred as you were. Okay, if the resurrection had already taken place, those... The, the saints being risen from the dead, then the other martyrs wouldn't get raised up to join the multitude too large to number. They'd still stay in the ground until after the seven years. Do you understand? So the dead in Christ will rise to meet the Lord in the air. It says, and thus shall we always be with the Lord. The dead in Christ will rise and join those who have, it says, those who remain. The word remain means have survived. Those who have survived the tribulation. Okay, that's how I see it. The martyrs have to go also. If there was already the dead in Christ will rise, if that had already happened, why are there souls under the altar? 
think about it. Why wouldn't they have been risen already? Or did they be martyred between the first seal and the fifth seal? Some could contend that. I still say that would leave them there for seven years until the first resurrection. I don't know why the, the one where it says the dead in Christ will rise. They don't consider, that's not being called the first resurrection. The word of God says when uh, at the first resurrection is when he comes to earth. To, to make his kingdom on earth. That's at the end of the seven years. And I'll pull that up and put it in the description box, okay? For those who want to know. Okay, so just think about it. And this is getting long, so let me... Six seal now, it's the great earthquake. And the multitude, too large to number, appear in heaven... And that's when the angel turns to John and says, Who are these? And John says, You know, my Lord. Like, I don't know, but you know. And he says, These are they which come up out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes white and made them clean in the blood of the Lamb. They will no longer hunger or thirst, or be hot, um, and something about drying their tears, so they've been crying, and they're tired, and so forth. So think about it. The Lord has got to come soon, but I honestly believe everything's going to return to normal somewhat. When that all this can't go anywhere ends, people can get their weddings. Because the Bible says, just as in the days of Noah, there will be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that God shut Noah into the ark. And seven days later, it started raining from the top and from the bottom. It came up from the earth, it came down from the firmament. And that world flooded that big bowl of water. It's like a it's flat and at the edges it tips up like a bowl. And that's ice. So every time they travel north or what they think is south they run into ice so they think oh we're at the north pole or oh we're at the south pole mm -hmm. yep otherwise all that water would have just ran off the earth think about it the world was flooded but the point is there has to be marriages going on that was put into the Bible for a reason. And I think it was a clue to tell us we're not quite done yet. When Trump calls an end to all this quarantine business, stay at home, can't go anywhere, you better not be found on the road or there's a $500 fine. That's what it is here. I don't know about your state. Anyway, I'm going to end this because it's getting too long. Did I plead the blood of Jesus already? Well, I think I did. So I'm going to end this with, I love you all. I, I proclaim that no weapon formed against us will prosper. I almost forgot to say that. Okay, I pray you enjoy this and that you've got something out of it that will help you. All right, bye for now. I'll talk to you later.